Right, today's video we're gonna have a look at how to make a really good compost, which is ideally suited for making compost tea. All right, so the first layer that we're gonna put down is leaves, and we're also even gonna include some of these stems. The reason being is because when we actually, when this is breaking down, we're gonna have some floaty bits, which is gonna be these stems, and they're gonna be colonized by actual decomposing fungi, and this will be great in the compost tea. So we need about a layer of, I don't know, about four or five centimeters of these leaves first. This is full of carbon, and this is gonna be our first starting layer. So did I understand you right when yeah? you said that we have to break down everything as small as possible so that the compost will break down as fast as possible? And that's also another point, yes. And it's gonna be round. That's why we have to stick in the middle so we don't lose track. Okay, so we're gonna add some of this hyphae uh, to the actual uh, leaf litter because it's full of lignin, lignin and we want to really inoculate uh, that layer. Now it's not 100% necessary because we're gonna mix it with the fork later on, but we just said, let's be on the safe side and just get, get that stuff in there and just mix it around. And we also need to, we need to water this entire thing as well. And we will keep on watering as we go along as well. But just to give it a bit of water for now, because it's gonna take a while to soak through a dry leaf. Right, this is going to be dried weeds already. Um, basically, when you're drying down your grass or your weeds, most of the N ratio is still quite high because it hasn't gone to seed yet. That's the really main important thing. So the next layer is gonna be this rotting mass that also has a bit of fungal hyphen in there. And we're gonna just chop that up now nicely and throw it on as the as next layer. So if you put your weeds, it's really important that it hasn't gone to seed yet. If put you want a high uh, uh, end content. Also because you probably don't want to spread those weed seeds all around the garden, right? Well, in this case, because we're making it semi-heated, it has to be above 55 degrees Celsius, good question. That will kill any pathogenic, any bad bacteria, fungus, anything like that, and bad nematodes. But it will, um, it will also kill those weed seeds as well. So, so first it has to go through that heating process, and but it's not allowed to go above uh, 65, 70 degrees Celsius. And uh, how long does it have to be at that temperature to kill all the pathogens and the weed seeds? So the bad guys, 11, 12 days. That's what Elaine Ingham recommends um, for making this compost. Okay. Should we take all the sticks out because they won't yes, decompose fast? Enough? Yeah, we want everything that is going to take ages to decompose, we want to take it out. I mean, those kind of things are fine because they're going to be swimming around in our compost tea. Mm -hmm. But anything bigger than that, we want to take out. So we'll break it up nicely. If we had a lawnmower, of course, this would be much faster. But we're in India. There's no... Have you seen a lawnmower actually? I haven't seen a lawnmower around the place. <laughs> Cows! <laughs> Cows, there. You get a cow and a, a goat. Our natural friends, the lawnmowers. Natural lawnmower. So if you have a lawnmower, you can just chop it up into small bits really quickly and it'll decompose much faster, huh? Yep, that's it. I'm glad you're here, Chandra, with me doing this because I'm still a bit delirious with my cold, so if I start saying stuff a bit funky, just listen to what Chandra says. <laughs> Her brain is working. <laughs> so, so that's layer two. So the only reason we can do it so fast is because of the climate here, right? Uh, partially, yes. Um, How long would this take? Because of the, the, the heat. It just helps things, it helps the microbes to kind of multiply much faster. The more heat, I mean within given range, the more heat the better. Uh -huh. uh, too much heat of course is not good, but um, usually it, it could take a lot longer in the West. Yeah, you how know, much longer? We could be Two times, three times longer? If you, yeah, about that. If you chop up everything finely, it's going to take not as long. Normally to making compost could take like six months to a year, but if you chop up everything really finely, well, you're going to speed things up quite a bit. You know? So you could make a good compost in about three months? Yeah, no problem. Cool. It's just fortunate that we're in the tropics. All right, next thing we're going to put in is some, because we're just in a, something that needs a lot of bacteria to break it down, 
Um, we're going to put some bacterial dominated um, soil in this case. You could also use compost. Chandra found something really, really amazing. Can we talk about that? So um, basically, I've, we have an old rotting coconut log here, and it all the inside broke down already, pretty much. And there's all those shredding organisms, mm. those um, arthropods and micro arthropods in there, and it'll help us um, shred all that material much quicker as well. It's great, huh? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let's just sprinkle some of that in there. We won't put all of it in there. That even smells uh, very sweet, as if it's dominated by bacteria as well. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah, so throw that in there as well. Now we're going to put in, now depending on what layer, if we're going to put something with high lignin content, we're going to inoculate it a little bit with the uh, fungally, fungal strands. And if we are going to put something like this on there that needs bacteria, we're going to put the bacteria on. So we won't mention it anymore, but that's what we're going to do. Now another thing we could also do is add some uh, molasses or sugar into it, then the bacteria are going to grow like crazy as well. Or sugar cane, we can actually put in some sugar cane leaves. So that's another thing, but we need to shred them really, really fine. Yeah. All right, so Chandra just mentioned about E. coli, and we need to talk about that because we're going to be adding some uh, cow dung. E. coli is what? How much? We have about two kilos of it in our gut naturally. Yeah, isn't every it? every healthy individual who hasn't taken antibiotics recently has two kilos of E. coli in their gut, and that's a really really good thing. But if they're in our and in our stomach, they make us really really sick. All right, and we don't want those in there because there's always this kind of thing where people are a bit worried about E. coli being in compost tea. Now, if you heat it up above 55 degrees you will not even find traces of E. coli in there. So that's according to Elaine Ingham, who studied this for 30 years. So I trust her over any kind of, anybody who has no clue and is worried about it. So she's done a lot of studies on that. Also, if you think about it, E. coli, seeing that they live in our gut, they're um, evolved to live at body temperature, which is about 37 degrees. So they're by more than 10 degrees yeah. out of their comfort zone. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so we're going to put in some cow dung, which already has a lot of different types of gut bacteria from the cow. Uh, best compost uh, making material in the world is going to be cow dung. We've dried it as well, um, just to be sure to get rid of any kind of grubs and things like that. Because we're going to put it actually into the soil uh, directly, and that's what you want to do. But in this case, we're going to compost it, so it should be fine. Isn't this buffalo dung? Oh, sorry, buffalo dung. <laughs> we keep getting that around. <laughs> That's it, we just break it up nicely. It's gonna take us a bit of time to get this high enough. We're gonna just break it all up, but it's well worth it. We'll save a lot of time this way. So we don't have to add any bacteria this time to this because it's cow dung and has already got some of the sleeping bacteria in here and they're gonna wake up now. Hey. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put some um, leaves of the sugar cane and it would be so wonderful if we had a crusher that could crush up the sugar cane themselves and we would get a lot of sugar uh, in there. But it's too fibrous, so it's not going to break down in time, break down enough in time. Now, it is also important to say you can just do this with some grass clippings and some dried leaves and just break them up. Um, we're putting all this extra stuff in there. It isn't absolutely necessary to get the right microbes and things like that in there to uh, make great compost tea. But I just wanted to mention that as well, because in case you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to put all the stuff in there, and I, where am I going to get all that stuff? It's not absolutely necessary. Now, to talk about the height, um, in the West, you would have to make it way higher. Like, we're going to get away with about that height. So you can see, it's going to take us a long time, but having said that, if you don't, if, you, if time is not an issue, you can put bigger bits in there because it's going to take longer to decompose anyway. But if you have time, you know, you're not going to spend lots of time doing this. But if you're under time pressure, um, then this is the way to go. So we'll just carry on now. We're not going to uh, show you the rest. We'll, show, we'll talk a little bit more now at the end of the video. Um, but for now, we're going to just kind of pile away uh, the stuff and you get the idea anyway. Yeah. Right, so next day it is. Uh, it took us quite some time 
to really get this done. It's surprising how much stuff we managed to put on that pile because we already shredded everything and made it really small so it's really compact actually so it's not going to yeah. shrink as much either. Which means it's going to heat up nicely as well. Now in the tropics you don't need to have a too high a pile. So 80 centimeters plenty. In the west though I would recommend making it a bit wider and also a bit higher as well. We have some sugar water we're going to add to this as well. We didn't mention it earlier, but we actually did water two or three times with sugar water as well, just to get the thing uh, going, the bacteria inside. Is there anything else we need to mention? Um, oh yeah, the whole thing about 11 days. Here in the tropics, it might only take six days because what we're trying to do is we're going to try and put, and we'll show you that now in a minute, we're trying to put what's on the outside into the inside. And because it's the tropics here, we might have to actually turn it every day. But in the West, you might only have to turn it every two days as well. So that's it. Should we put on the tap and... Add first the water, then the Oh yeah, yeah, we need to do the sugar watering thing. That's great. And we inoculated everything really well as well. Um, you wouldn't normally have to do that because you're going to be turning it as well every two days. But we just thought, let's just get this thing, give it the head start it needs as well. Um, and that should be all right. So that's it, we'll just get to the actual turning now tomorrow, I'll show you how to do that. And then, yeah, we'll just skip to that bit now. So what we have here now is, we have a compost pile that is pretty much fungally, it's going to be fungally dominated because we added much more browns as well. So the temperature range is good because we're here in the tropics. Um, I'll just show you a, just quickly a clip here on top of this video uh, that'll show you the temperature range. And so we have above 55 degrees, so I can start now turning this pile. And the reason I want it to be more fungally dominated is because compost piles, are, they have like 20, 30 times more fungi and bacteria in it than you would find in ordinary uh, soils. So that's, that's a really good thing to know because it's a great base for making compost teas. So when we start putting that into the compost teas, if it's bacterial dominated, then it's just going to uh, give a boost to the plant's growth and you can also put it on the leaves and the bacteria will colonize the leaves and actually uh, protect the leaves that way. But when it's fungally dominated, it's going to help the soils actually way, way more because most of us, when we dig the soil, the bacteria will start recovering pretty fast. But the, the fungi, which are really important uh, part of this whole soil food web, is something that we really need to have in our soils. Um, adding mulches, of course, is going to benefit that as well. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a fungally dominated uh, compost for the compost teas. Now, if it doesn't heat up enough for you, especially with the fungally dominated compost, um, then what you need to do is you need to add some more greens to the matter. So just, just do um, every fourth layer or so a bit more greens and that surely will heat up the pile. Now turning the pile actually will also heat it up. Um, if it gets too hot, you can actually cool it down by turning it. So it's a bit of a strange one. And adding water to cool it down is also a possibility too. Right, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top layer and start putting it into a wheelbarrow. So that's pretty good. That's, it's warmish, but it's not really hot enough yet. Here we have now, this, in this circle here, we have a really hot center. Let me just take you a bit closer so you can see what I mean. So this is now where the start of the middle is going to be. And this is exactly what we're going to use for our base of our new pile. Now the base of the new pile is going to be obviously just right next to it. Just to make your life a little bit easier. And what we want to do is, we're going to separate that what is in the center from that which is actually surrounding the sides and what's in the sides we're going to put into the wheelbarrow. And if I run out of space in the wheelbarrow, obviously I'll just put it on a sheet or something like that. All right, so I have taken everything from the outside, put it in the wheelbarrow, everything from the inside I put actually at the bottom. Now the next layer, which is pretty warm as well, I can start putting um, here on the outside and start putting stuff from the wheelbarrow in the inside. And by doing it like that, eventually everything is going to end up in the inside that was um, cold and everything that is hot is going to be on the outside. Um, and that should be it. Um, one thing I forgot to mention as well is that piles that basically go above like 65 degrees 
they can, um, when they start going to 68 degrees or so, they can actually start, uh, the microbes start growing so much that they basically run out of oxygen because they're using it really fast and then the whole thing can go anaerobic. And um, so turning it is a good idea to cool it down again. Now another thing, if it goes up to about 88 degrees, because at that stage the microbes will start making alcohols and the whole thing can actually blow up, burn, uh, not blow up, but you know, it can ignite and then it's a fire hazard as well. Just to mention that safety note here as well. So be, be, be on top of it. Don't make them too big either. Um, we do want the high nitrogen content in there, but just don't, um, like grasses and things, but like literally don't build them too high either, you know, and then you should be fine. Okay, so this is now the second turning, so things are going really, really well with this compost pile um, and turning it is bringing in a lot of oxygen as well, so second day of turning and second day of after making the compost pile. One thing that I really want to mention as well, I'm trying to give you all the information, is that of course the, main, the name of the game is to try and get it to a minimum of 55, a little bit higher would be better, but as soon as it reaches that, we need to get oxygen into this pile because this pile has very very small amounts of bits and pieces so there's not as much oxygen getting in so it's really handy to be able to turn in every day and getting the 55 degrees to kill the pathogens as well. Okay so here we are third consecutive day in a row and it's heating up nicely as well and because of course I mentioned already probably in this video that I'm turning it every day. I could let it go up a bit higher than 55.5 degrees Celsius, but I need to get oxygen in there. So for you probably anywhere in the West, or in America, or wherever you're gonna be, it's gonna take at least two days to heat up. It might go faster than that, but at the same time, turning it is the best thing you can do in any case. All right, so that concludes this video. Basically, we are now turned it another three times. We've got it up to the heat. Now it's not going up any hotter. Um, some of it is actually starting to break down nicely. All the crumbs in there are basically bits that have broken down. These are still the grass clippings that are in there. And because it's not heating up anymore and we've turned it enough, I'm going to now stick it down at about that height, maybe 20 centimeters, flatten it out, uh, cover it up as well and then within about a week or two it's going to be uh, all the basically all the fungi are going to get into these leaves that didn't decompose yet because we've been turning it so much the fungi haven't had their chance so now is their time and also the cooler loving bacteria will uh, start waking up again as well so that's it hope you enjoyed the video and you learned a lot and this is basically how you set up a really good compost with billions and billions of microbes in there so might see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ooh, there's a worm. Look at this. Actually, there's two soil worms in our compost heap, which is basically the one, if you remember, uh, Chandra and myself. Oh, here's another one. Three. That's three worms. Uh, let me just get you guys out of the sun a little bit. Still leaves in there. Sorry. Anyway. So this is basically the perfect type of uh, compost. Oh my God, look, there's another one here. Oh, and there's another one. I'm sorry. It's just a lot of worms here and I want to rescue them. So I'd say this pile is completely covered in worms. If only this little area is where, oh, there's another one and another. Jeez, it's just in a handful. I got like 10 worms. That's amazing.